Are you one of those people who watch me and dream about RV living, but you think it's completely out of range for you that you can't afford it? A lot of people watch me all the time and say, geez, I wish I could afford to do that. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the entire process step by step that I went through when I first started out over seven years ago to figure out whether or not I could afford to live in an RV. So you're going to want to grab a pen and paper or open up your favorite spreadsheet app so that I can walk you through how to figure out whether or not you can afford to live in an RV. Let's go inside and get started. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to find your own. Hey Rellies, I'm Carolyn and welcome back to my life living in an RV. When I first started thinking about living in an RV, it wasn't just a super overnight spontaneous decision. There was a lot of planning, a lot of processing, a lot of thinking. And one of the things that I had to do was figure out what my cost of living was going to be living in an RV versus living in a traditional sticks and bricks and whether or not I could afford it. I know a lot of you have those same questions. It's funny, I hear all the time, I wish I could afford it. I guess people may not realize how inexpensive it really is. And I've done videos about RV living budget, whether or not you can live in an RV for less than $1,000 a month. So I'll put links to those videos below. But today what I wanna do is walk you through step by step the exact process I did to figure out whether or not living in an RV was financially feasible for me. So do you have your pen and paper or your spreadsheet open on your computer? I did it in a spreadsheet. I'm a geek. I love spreadsheets. I'll admit it. So here is what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to make four columns. One, two, three. So you've got one, two, three, four columns. Label the first one expenses. Label the second one sticks and bricks. Label the third one RV life. And label the fourth one difference. Can you see where we're going here? So I'm going to walk you through this step by step. This is an actual tutorial. So we're going to go a little slow because I want to explain everything uh, to make sure you understand and make sure you do it correctly so that you can find out whether or not you can afford to live in an RV. All right, the first item you're gonna write under expenses is rent or mortgage. Right now we're just writing down the categories, okay? So rent or mortgage, uh, insurance, your home insurance, or if you have renter's insurance, taxes, house maintenance and repairs, cable TV, cell phone, so when you're writing down that number of how much you're paying every month for your cell phone bill, you might be asking yourself, why the heck am I paying so much money for my cell phone every month? <laughs> and if you're like me and you're wondering that all the time, then you might be excited to learn about my new partner, Mint Mobile. You can get cell phone plans for as little as $15 a month. And don't worry, don't let the cost fool you. Just because it's so much less expensive than what you're used to paying doesn't mean you have to sacrifice speed or coverage or even data. Mint Mobile is built on the nation's largest 5G network, so you don't have to worry about sacrificing anything. The only reason their prices are as low as they are is because they have gotten rid of all the brick and mortar stores. So kind of like you thinking about hitting the road, <laughs> guess ditching the sticks and bricks, they have ditched the brick and mortar. So everything is done online, which is how we're all doing everything anyway. And if you ever gone into a cell phone store, you're held hostage in there anyway. So they've gotten rid of the brick and mortar so that they can pass the savings of all of that lack of overhead onto you, the consumer. It is a great deal. Everybody I know who has tried Mint Mobile absolutely loves it. So you can start today. It's super easy to switch. You can do it online in as little as 15 minutes. If you have a phone that's unlocked, and that is compatible, you can get an eSIM card, you can download it, and you can literally switch your cell phone plan in 15 minutes and get started with the nation's largest 5G network. And don't worry, if your phone isn't compatible, Mint Mobile will mail you a SIM card absolutely free to arrive in just a couple days. They even let you try it before you buy it. So if you're worried that it's not gonna work in your area, don't worry, rest assured, just go ahead and try it and you'll 
have the confidence going in that you can save a whole bunch of money and still have great coverage. Every one of the Mint Mobile plans includes nationwide unlimited talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G service and free mobile hotspot. It's a deal you can't beat. And what a great way to start off your new RV life with a super premium and less expensive cell phone plan. And I have really exciting news. As a partner of this channel, Mint Mobile is offering you 50% off all unlimited plans. What an amazing deal. You're going to be able to get all of the unlimited plans at 50% off. New activation and paying three months up front is required to get this great deal. So use this link right here or scan the QR code or click the link in the video description or the pinned comment below. Get started saving huge money on your cell phone bill today. The more money you can save now, the closer you get to that dream of living in an RV. So go ahead and click on my partner Mint Mobile's link right now to get started. Okay, back to our spreadsheet. And next on the list is internet and phone, in case you still have a landline, electric and gas, water and garbage, your car payment, insurance, transportation costs every month, whether you still commute to work or not, what do you spend on gas, tolls, etc. Next is car maintenance. Remember, you're just writing down the list right now. And if I'm going a little fast, you can always pause while I'm doing this. I'm also going to make this spreadsheet available for patrons and channel members. So if you're a patron or a channel member, I'll post a link to a Google Doc so that you can download the spreadsheet and uh, you have the workbook basically at your uh, fingertips. All right. But if I'm going too fast, just pause and rewind if you need to. All right, your next item that you're writing down is groceries. And you can separate out if you want food from like cleaning supplies. I was laying a bit last night trying to decide. It, it's up to you. If you feel that that should be separate, go ahead and separate it. If you think there might be a huge difference between like cleaning supplies in your uh, sticks and bricks life versus RV life. But I just lumped them all together. It all goes under the grocery bill, basically. Next, you're going to write down your medical prescriptions, insurance. Next line item is eating out and then ent entertainment and then clothing and health and beauty. All right. So those are all the line items and I'm going to write them out right here on the spreadsheet. You're, those are all the line items you're going to start with. If there's anything else that isn't here that is applicable to your life, whether it's something that you're spending now that you're not going to spend later or something, you know, anything that is uh, unique to you that isn't covered here, you might want to go ahead and put next, uh, put a, a line item there. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to fill out each line item. How much are you currently spending on rent or mortgage? What is your current monthly insurance payment? How much are your real estate taxes, your property taxes? And here's another thing. What you're, what you're going to want to do is figure out what your monthly expense is. So everything here is going to be monthly. So you pay property taxes quarterly, right? I think it's quarterly or every other. It's been a long time since I've been, since I paid property taxes or annually. I can't remember. If you do pay annually, what you're going to need to do is figure out what your property tax bill is, divide it by 12 and put your monthly cost here. So we're just trying to figure out what your monthly expenses are right now. Uh, cable TV. So we cable slash TV, write down what you're spending internet and phone. So if you have a, a landline and you have one lump, you know, of internet and phone, go ahead and put that down your cell phone. If that's separate, go ahead and put that down electric and gas what that is again per month, what your water and garbage is per month. And I think we paid water and garbage every other month, I think when I had a house. So again, you want to make sure you put your monthly cost, your car payment, if you have one, your car insurance, your transportation costs, and your car maintenance. And you might want to figure out what you spend annually, maybe even every two years and average that out uh, per month. What What is your per month car maintenance, uh, 
budget or whatever? What do you spend on a monthly basis, right? Because some months you don't spend anything on car maintenance, but then all of a sudden you need brakes, whole bunch of work. You're spending a seven hundred thousand dollars. What is that equal to spread out over a year? Let's figure that out, or three years, whatever you think is most applicable uh, to you depending on how much maintenance you have to do for your car. Next is your grocery bill. How much do you spend on groceries every month? How much do you spend on medical, uh, your ins medical insurance, your prescriptions, any out-of-pocket co-pays that are regular? What is that each month? Next is what you spend eating out. This is where things got really interesting for me. <laughs> living the life I was living, I was spending a lot of money on this last section, uh, eating out entertainment, going to the movies, bowling, any clubs that you belong to, maybe even any magazine subscriptions that you have, uh, anything that is for entertainment purposes. Uh, go ahead and figure out what you pay per month. Uh, maybe even if you're streaming uh, maybe Amazon Prime might go in there, or if you're paying for Hulu on top of cable or whatever, you would probably want to put that in there. How much do you spend on an average month for clothing? Again, you may not buy clothes every month, but try to figure out what you spend in a year and divide that by 12 to figure out what your monthly cost is. And finally, health and beauty. This was a big one for me. What do you spend on health and beauty? Are you doing mani-pedis on a regular basis? Are you getting massage? Are you doing Reiki? Are you doing, uh, what else did I do? Personal trainers, getting my hair done. Uh, figure out what you spend uh, in, in a month if you do get your hair cut every month and stuff like that. But otherwise, you might want to do a year. Figure out what you spend in a year. If you get your hair cut every six to eight weeks, it would probably be best to figure out what you're spending a year to get your hair done and then divide that by 12 to get your monthly cost. So what is your month? cost of health and beauty. Next, okay, so add that up. So go ahead and, and total that column up to find out what your currently monthly expenditures are. And then if you want to, you can also make a separate line item for what is your income, subtract what your current costs are to figure out what your disposable income is after everything. You know, are you able to put money in savings or are you in the red? <laughs> are you adding up all your expenses and it's more than what you uh, are currently earning? That happens to a lot of people. It's be nice to know that, right? So here is where some pre-planning is going to do. Next, you're going to do the exact same thing, but you're going to have to kind of guess what these same costs are going to be for living in an RV. And I hope that it you've already done some planning, some research, you've kind of given some thought to the kind of RV life you want to have. Do you want to do a tour of all the national parks and stay in the national park campgrounds? Do you want to go from RV resort to RV resort? Do you want to go boondocking? Do you want to just stay in Arizona, California, Nevada, or, you know, one state and just move around a little bit? You're going to kind of need to know this before you get to the next step. So if you haven't thought that through yet, you probably want to take a couple steps back and just kind of do some soul searching and say, okay, I need to be realistic about what kind of life I want to live. This is also a budget for monthly costs of RV life versus sticks and bricks. This does not take into account the cost that it's going to take to buy the vehicle that you're going to live in. I'm assuming you know, I, I knew I had, I think I had 12 or 13,000 left in, in uh 401k. I cashed it out. I paid a big penalty and I ended up with about 10,000 in cash. And that's what I bought Matilda with. So I'm, I'm assuming you already have some way to purchase the vehicle, the car, the van, the RV that you're going to live in. And this is just looking at your expenses. Now, what you're going to need to do is figure out each of these expenses for your RV life. Rent or mortgage. If you're going to be boondocking all the time, that's going to be a big fat zero. If you're going to be boondocking most of the time and you think, okay, maybe twice a month, I'll go to an RV park. That might be a hundred bucks a month. Okay. So what do you think your rent or mortgage is going to be living in an RV? And that'll be whether you're paying nothing or RV parks, campgrounds, whether you're getting, uh, maybe you're going to be in New Mexico, you're going to get a New Mexico state park pass, 
figure all of those costs in. And again, if you're paying for an annual pass, what is that cost going to be per month? Make sense? You follow me? You with me? Uh, any homeowners or renters insurance? Probably nothing. Uh, we'll, we'll get to RV insurance under vehicle insurance. So that's probably going to be nothing. So there's a big savings already. Your uh, real estate taxes, your property taxes, zero if you plan on selling your house, right? Nothing. And if you're not going to be selling your house, then well, that's going to be a whole different spreadsheet. That's going to be something else. If you do plan on keeping your house and renting it out and you your mortgage is 2000 and you're going to be able to get 2500 in rent, then I guess that's a wash, right? Because that extra 500 will pay for taxes and maintenance and things like that. That's a whole other uh, set of variables that you're going to have to work out for yourself. This is assuming you sell everything you own like I did. House maintenance and repairs. So... This is what again where some planning is going to come in. You're going to have to figure out uh, if I'm how many miles am I going to drive. So how often am I going to need brakes? How often am I going to need tires? I'm going to get my oil changed every five thousand miles, and I pay about seventy nine eighty dollars every time I get an oil change. So again, this is where some planning comes in. And if you don't know how much these things cost, I highly encourage you to check out my video in the video description below because I outline everything that it costs to live in an RV, including maintenance and, uh, and things like that. So check out that video if you don't know what these things might cost, at least just to give you a guide. Uh, cable TV. So you're probably going to get rid of cable, but are you going to be streaming? And you can put it either your streaming costs, if you're going to get Hulu, if you're going to get Netflix, you can either put that here or put it in entertainment. But think about what you're going to need to watch TV on the road and put that cost here. Your cell phone, so that's probably not going to change. You might need to get a better plan if you're going to be using mobile hotspot data. So that, again, you're going to have to research that, figure out how much mobile hotspot data you might need. You're not going to need a whole lot, probably, if you're not working on the road. So your cell phone bill might go up a little bit, but it might not. It might it might stay the same. So figure out what that is and put it here. Um internet and phone. Again, you're probably going to use your cell phone for everything, but if you're going to get Starlink, you're going to need to include that cost here. Electric and gas. So this is house, electric and gas. So figure out what you might need for propane. And again, in the video that I did budget, I, I put all of that. I don't know. I spend maybe a hundred dollars a month on propane, not even $50 a month on propane. I think something like that. And next is garbage and water. So you're not going to have traditional garbage and water service living in an RV, but you are going to need to pay for dump stations. Uh, about $10, $15 for me every two weeks living alone. So I don't know, maybe $30 a month for that. I, I always go a little bit high just to give myself wiggle room if I need to. You can adjust it later, but let's say worst case scenario, you need to pay 15 bucks to dump your tanks every two weeks. That's $30 a month. Car payment. Again, this is going to depend on whether or not you're going to keep your car or you're going to sell it. If you're going to sell it and you're only going to have an RV or a van that's fully paid for, this is going to be zero. If you're going to keep your car and you still have a payment as a toad or you're going to live in it, of course, you're going to keep your car payment. Also, I think if you plan on financing an RV, I guess you could put that monthly cost of financing the RV also under car payment. Be a good way, good place to put it instead of rent or mortgage. Yeah, go ahead and put it there. Next is your insurance. So this is where your version, your RV version of homeowner's insurance comes in. So full-timers RV insurance does include things like liability and theft and things like that. It's kind of like, a actually it's more like a renter's uh, a rental renter's insurance policy, kind of a homeowner's too, in case anybody trips and falls on your chair outside your RV. So you're probably going to need to call around. I think I pay about a hundred dollars a month for full-timers insurance for, for everything, full liability, full collision, everything for my RV. I think it's about a hundred dollars a month. 
uh, transportation costs, gas, tolls, etc. Again, this is going to depend on how much you're going to drive. If you have an idea of what vehicle you're going to be driving, you can figure out what the gas mileage is. I get eight miles to the gallon. I have a 52 gallon tank. So a full tank gets me about 400 miles. So you can figure out what the cost of gas is. Let's for making it easy. Let's say it's $4 a gallon. So what is that? Four fifty-two. It's about $200, a little over $200 to drive 400 miles. So that is something you're definitely going to need to figure out. You're going to be having to pay tolls, if you, especially these stupid toll roads in the Northeast or west of the east of the Mississippi. Are tolls going to be part of your life? And if so, include all of that here. Car maintenance. I think we covered this under home maintenance. Yeah, so you can kind of combine those, I think, for living in an RV. Your car maintenance is going to be the same as your home maintenance. What is your... Oh, did, did I put that up there? Yeah, I think we talked about it in the home maintenance. So if you already included oil changes and brakes and tires and repairs and sealing the 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 uh, waterproofing your ceiling, if you included all of that in the above one under under housing, then go ahead and skip that. If not, you can add it here. Uh, groceries. So how are you? Do you think your groceries will change? you probably won't be needing to buy as many cleaning supplies because you're going to be living in a much smaller space. So figure out what you're spending your money on at the grocery store and figure out whether that's going to change. Do you, If you're going to be retired and you think you're going to have more time to cook, your grocery bill might go down if you're buying a lot of processed pre-made food. So this might take a little bit of uh, investigating, you know, looking at your grocery budget, looking at what you're spending money on and figuring out, is it going to be the same, more uh, or less and put down what you think it's going to cost in your RV life. One of the things too about RV living, at least the way I do it, is if I'm stocking up every two weeks and going and sitting, I'm probably spending less money on groceries than if you're making regular trips to the grocery store, right? Regular trips to the grocery store, you're always going to be buying things you don't need. It's just human nature. But when I'm just going every two weeks, there is a less, I, I have less frequent visits so less chance of buying I'm so I'm buying less stuff that I don't need I mean I, sure every two weeks I might buy stuff that I don't need but I'm not going to the grocery store every other day and getting tempted by more expensive things than I would normally buy or if I'm hungry or whatever so that's something else to consider your medical expenses that's probably not going to change right um insurance prescriptions but you might need to look into that and figure out whether or not uh, you, you might need to be paying more for prescriptions to get mailed to you or whatever. That might be something that you're going to have to figure out. Uh, eating out. I don't eat out a couple times a year. I mean, it, it, mostly in my normal life. So for me, that went to almost zero. It went from whatever it was to almost zero. But if you're going to be traveling a lot, how often do you think you're going to be eating out? What do you think you're going to spend? How much do you want to budget for yourself? Uh, and put that here. What do you think you'll be spending on entertainment? And again, if you didn't put streaming services above in cable TV, you can put that here. But uh, you can decide whether or not you want to put park entrance fees or anything like that here. But I think that's all part of kind of like your rent or mortgage payment. Clothing. You're probably not going to need to buy as many clothes living in an RV, or at least not the fancy expensive ones. At least I don't. So what do you think your clothing budget is going to be living in an RV? And finally, health and beauty. <laughs> what do you think your health and beauty budget is going to be living on the road? Do you think it's going to be less or do you think it's going to be more? But now that you filled that, that whole column up, add it up. And now what you want to do is figure out what is your current cost of living in sticks and bricks and what do you think your cost of living is going to be living in an RV? Most of the time, that difference is going to be is going to be a positive, right? Like black, you're going to have, I'm, wow, I'm going to be saving money living in an RV. So if your income is going to stay the same and your costs, your expenses are going down, you can absolutely, definitely afford to live in an RV. 
but if your income is going to be going down, like I, I pretty much plan on my income going down because I was completely changing my business model. So if I knew who, how much I would be spending every month living in an RV, I knew how much I was going to have to earn. And I think it was like a thousand dollars when I first started. I'm like, I can earn a thousand dollars with my eyes closed. You know, I mean, as an entrepreneur, someone with a lot of different skills, I, I knew I'm $250 a week. I could do it like that. So just knowing what your expenses are going to be and knowing what you're currently, that was a big eye opener for me when I did this exercise. I was like, how much am I spending? I mean, five or $6,000, I think it was. And then I was looking at my RV life and I'm like, I can do that for $1,500 a month or whatever it was. I know I'm changing my numbers. I don't remember what it was, but it was a lot less than what my cost of living in my traditional life was. And once you realize that it really is a lot less, it kind it gives you a lot of freedom for finding different ways to earn money, for changing how you view work. So this is the exercise that I went through in order to figure out whether or not I could afford to live in an RV. And it was eye-opening. I was like, I could absolutely afford, I mean, a fraction. It would cost a fraction of the cost to live in an RV uh, than it would in my traditional life. And even with Matilda, which I paid 8000 for, put about 20,000 into her in the first year and a half. And that was all out of pocket. That was all money I was able to spend because I didn't have my sticks and bricks expenses. I didn't have the overhead. I didn't have the expenses that I had. And so I was saving money. And as fast as I saved it, I was spending it on something else to fix in Matilda. But I was able to do that because I wasn't spending as much. So again, I'm going to put a link to this spreadsheet for channel members and patrons. So if you want a copy of it, go ahead and feel free to join. There are links below. And if not, just, you know, go through this video a couple times and go through it step by step and write everything down and rewind and fast forward and pause and you'll be able to get it done. Or if you'd like some personal guidance going through this process or answering any questions about how to start in RV life, you can book some time with me. Go ahead and visit my website. There's a link in the video description below. I do coaching and consulting, and I can even answer a simple question for you uh, in a short video. So go ahead and check that out in the video description below. And let me know, was this helpful? What do you think? Do you think now you can afford RV life? I know people think it's a lot more expensive than it is. So tell me what you learned from this exercise in the comments below. And I thank you all so much for hanging out with me and do me a favor and double check and make sure you're still subscribed to my channel. Cause every time I say this, people are like, I was unsubscribed. I've been watching you for years. So do me a favor and double check. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? You're watching my videos and it really helps me out. If you just click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below. All right. Thanks for listening. And I hope you found this helpful and I will see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free and be kind. I'll see you soon.